guys, so today's video is going to be a cosplay tutorial slash walkthrough of how I created my princess bubblegum shoes. This was a really fun process to do, uh, both in terms of painting this, our pink and white candy stripes, as well as adding real candy itself to the shoe. And you may be saying, Regan, you are an insane person. Why did you put candy on your shoes where it's going to break or melt or attract bugs? And the answer is, I did it in the proper way. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. Before we get started, this video is sponsored by Shiny Leaf. Shiny Leaf manufactures nourishing hair rescue products, and actually, I'm holding a giveaway for this right now on TikTok. You can enter to win your own hair care package, or you can get 10% off your order with the code CBC10. This was a really fun process, to be honest. I wasn't going to do this at first because Bubblegum's feet are actually completely hidden under my dress, but I realized that mm, if I'm gonna be entering it in a contest at some point, I should probably have some footwear that isn't my giant five-inch tall hidden sneaker platforms. Uh, and so thus these were born. These are really cute, I actually love them a lot. So first things first, fair warning, even though I have coated these to make these a little bit stronger and a little bit safer, do be aware that they are real candy and thus they are not the most solid things on planet Earth. If you put them on the toe like I did, this is a kind of dangerous game to play and you have to make sure that you're not going to accidentally kick something accidentally because you know I don't care how much resin you have on this peppermint, when you slam it into the side of a sidewalk, it might shatter on you. For me, this wasn't really a concern because I'm wearing a humongous hoop skirt with it and so I probably have to hork up really bad in order Order for me to kick these into something. A safer bet, however, would probably be to put all of the candy on the back or on the side, somewhere where you are less likely to do something absolutely ridiculous with it. So whenever I go to customize cosplay shoes, I pretty much always go and hit up the thrift store for my base. And the reason for that is number one, in my brain, I still exist in the year 2001, where you should be able to get a pair of shoes for $10. And number two, I like trying on a lot of different kinds of shoes because I really want to wear something that is comfortable. You know, there's a lot to be said for cosplay accuracy, but at the end of the day, I am a big advocate for your comfort is way more important. You know, I, if your character has heels, but you really can't walk in them, forget it. Make them flats, make them small wedges. You need to do what is going to make your feet feel good after three hours at a con. It doesn't matter how great your shoe looks if you're in pain and struggling and can't enjoy yourself because of it. For me, what that usually means is getting a really high heeled shoe because I like being tall, uh, but I don't like my foot at that weird angle. So what I like to go for is these kinds of platforms so that it reduces the angle that my shoe is at while I can still be pretty high up. Wedges are my favorite, couldn't find a wedge. So this is what I ended up with. Just a regular black, nice heeled shoe that fit me really well. And you may be saying, well, Regan, why are you starting with black? That sounds like a horrible idea to do for bubblegum. And the good news is, is you can paint these bad boys however you want. If you're starting out with a leather or a patent leather shoe like this, you want to do a little bit of prep work. The first thing you need to do is actually strip that top coating off of the shoe. If you leave it on, you may find that your paint is not going to stick particularly well. And so this is going to help you get a little bit more grip. It's really easy to do. You can either use something like a leather stripper, especially if you're working with a real leather shoe, or in this case, you can just use acetone or nail polish remover. It does a good enough job. There's one more step that you want to do, and that is to actually scuff up the shoe a little bit. Not a whole lot, 250 grit sandpaper rubbed lightly over the shoe a couple times in a circular motion is more than enough. And what this is doing is this is adding some tooth to an otherwise very slick and slippery surface. Paint does not stick as well when the surface is really, really slick. If any of you guys have ever tried to paint Fibra and you notice that your paint flakes off really, really easily, this is exactly the same thing. You need either a paint that grips really well or you need to scuff up the surface in some capacity. You don't want to put in really deep marks. You don't want it super visible. But what you do want is these little micro abrasions so that the paint has something to grip onto and it will last a lot longer on your shoe. So after we have done these two things, they're ready to paint. Our favorite paint to use is actually Angelus Leather Paint. 
And it doesn't matter if your shoe is not actually leather. This works great on pleather. It works great on even suede. I've used it on vinyl before, although the finish is a little bit funky. Uh, but this is our favorite because number one, it's flexible. Number two, it's just a really high quality product. It goes on great and thick. You don't see the brush strokes. And I just think that it takes a lot less effort and a lot less coats to get a really beautiful color. Even with that though, it took me a good three coats to go to this bright pink. So just be aware that you need to coat it a couple times if you're aiming for a light or a really saturated color, but you'll probably need less if you're going darker. This stuff is really wonderful, but if you don't have access to it, or maybe say you need a really funky color or a metallic or something like that, there's other paints that you can use as well. What you really want to do is find a flexible paint specifically. Fabric and floral paint are both flexible, but some other very cosplay specific types that I recommend are actually uh, the plaid FX paint or my favorite, the Lumiere Jacquard paint. Both of these are very flexible and they come in some really interesting funky colors. Uh, they might require a little bit more coats than the Angelus leather paint, but they are great alternatives and they will not flake and crack. And you may be saying, Regan, what do you mean by that? Well, when you walk in your shoe, you may notice that this thing is not a big old hunk of plastic. It does move a tiny bit, not a lot, but a little bit. Some shoes might move more than others. But if you paint this with a paint that is not flexible, as the shoe moves, the paint can't flex, and so it's going to crack and flake off, and that is where you're going to experience that flaking and that really unsightly peeling that can sometimes happen when you paint shoes. To avoid that, you want to use a paint that is capable of moving and flexing. So after I painted the pink, I decided that I wanted a little bit of extra oof to it, and I added this fun little candy cane stripe thing on the back here. Now, I know we have a lot of really fun tools like the Cricut and vinyl paper and all of this fun advanced technology, but you know, sometimes the old standbys and the cheap and easy ways of doing things still work really well. And so what I used to make this stripe stencil was blue tape. This works pretty well. I would say that it is not as sticky as vinyl, um, but the idea is exactly like a vinyl stencil. If I want to create a stripe, I want to mask off the parts of the shoe that I don't want painted. So just kind of pressing, you can see here how this follows the line of what I had done earlier. And so when I paint this, you just paint up against that blue tape here and this tape will protect the underside of the shoe from getting painted. If you can use vinyl, that'll be a little bit more secure. Blue tape works, but blue tape does not really like to be pulled up and put back down. You kind of have to use it once and leave it alone. And also just be aware that it's a little tougher to use over a curve. But you know, this stuff is cheap. Painter's tape is great. I like to use it all the time. So if you don't have a stencil in hand, just reach for this. The last thing I do recommend is adding a top coat or a sealer to this, especially if you want this to last and get this nice glossy look. Angelus makes a sealer. There's a lot of other types of acrylic sealers that you can use. Just again, make sure that it's a flexible kind because you don't want this flaking off as you walk. Now I know the part that everyone really wants to talk about is actually the candy on here. Um, and some people think I'm a completely insane person for using real candy, but there's a couple reasons I'm willing to do that. The main one is for the realism. I just, I know you can make similar things out of clay, but to me, I can always look at those and tell that, ah, that's a clay peppermint versus this is a wonderful looking peppermint. And yeah, I could do it out of resin, but the amount of time and effort to do that is just an absolute killer. And so I said, well, why don't I just use actual candy and make the effort to make it good and solid and non-perishable and secure on here? This is actually the same method that I used for my bubblegum crown, and that bad boy is a year and a half and strong and is still looking fantastic. So I'm really pleased with how this method turned out. When I went to figure out how to securely coat and seal these candies, 
I really thought that this was something that I was gonna find a whole bunch of resources for because, you know, resin craft is the new hotness. Everyone's embedding like flowers and gold dust and gold leaf and stuff and D&D &D scrolls inside of dice. And I said, someone has done this. Somebody has made resin coated candy and they're gonna tell me exactly how to do this. And no, I was like shocked that I really couldn't find a lot of resources for how to do this. The only things I could really find were embedding flowers and then one person who'd actually coated some candy corn in some stuff, which like, let's be honest, candy corn isn't real food. And I say this as a person who loves candy corn, but yeah, I was very, very surprised. And so I made this method based off of a couple different um, guides that I had read that were not exactly what I wanted, but I thought that they could be really applicable. What I ended up doing was two different protecting coats. There is the resin coat that's gonna be our very final one, but I really wanted a second coat before I got started in order to really lock everything into place. My worry was that because this candy is colored with food coloring, what's gonna happen when I pour what's essentially a liquid resin over it? Is it going to make the colors run? Is it gonna look all muddy and color up the clear resin? I was really afraid of that. And so what I did to start is I first sealed it temporarily with a clear acrylic spray in order to make it a bit more waterproof and protect it from that upcoming layer of resin. This is Krylon Clearcast, which I really like. I use it for all kinds of stuff. And essentially what we wanna do here is very thoroughly spray all of the candy on the top, but also all of the sides. So this is why I'm kind of walking around the box to make sure that I'm hitting it on every single one of the four sides. And then eventually when it's dry, I'm gonna do it a second time. And then eventually when that is dry, I'm gonna flip every piece over and do it again. We really want to seal all sides of this. You know, if we only seal the front but not the back, that's how we're gonna get the moisture creeping in. Once that is completely set and dry, then it is finally time for our protectant resin coat. Now there's several different kinds of resin that you can use. I know some people who like to use UV resin. There's a lot of people who like to use resin that you buy from the craft store, which is a very clear, fun, uh, small project kind of thing. The resin that I usually use is actually a smooth on brand resin that you can buy from a store called Reynolds Advanced Materials. This is a professional grade resin. It comes in a mostly clear type. Uh, the one that I use usually is called Smooth Cast, either 325 or 326, depending on your set time. It is clear enough. It's not crystal clear because the actual crystal clear one is noxious and dangerous. And I do not recommend using that unless you have a, a real professional setup. I do not. And so I use the crystal clear, but that's perfectly fine for me. I think this looks great. Unfortunately, I know everyone can't necessarily access the smooth on products. They do sell it on Amazon and sometimes in big box stores, but I actually don't recommend buying it from there. If you've ever had a cosplayer say to you, oh yeah, I used this kind of craft store resin and it worked great for me. And then another cosplayer says, huh, I used that exact same resin and it totally didn't work whatsoever. It's not because they didn't necessarily do it correctly. It might be because they got an expired product. Resin usually does not last more than a year. And if you try and use it past its shelf life, you'll find that it does things like not set up or bloom or other not nice stuff. And unfortunately, when you buy something from a warehouse on Amazon, you have no idea if that product has just been sitting there for the last two and a half years. And so when it arrives to you, it's already expired and you had no chance of success. So instead, I really do suggest buying it directly from the manufacturer, if possible, having them ship it to you if it's during a warm month, or you can go to a local craftsman or artist supply store where you know that they are cycling the product at a responsible rate. Anywho, resin is fun and great. My clear cast had actually gone bad when I went to make this. So what I used instead was XTC 3D. This is actually supposed to be a coating for 3D prints, but works fine here. I just need something nice and clear to coat my candy in. By the way, you guys see the little cough syrup container that I'm mixing these in? I love these. If you mix really small batches of resin like me, I highly, highly, highly recommend buying a $5 pack of these bad boys. We used to mix in Dixie cups and while that worked kind of, these have actual little labels on them. These are really fantastic for small products. I'm actually gonna link these in the comments below because I love them so much. You can see exactly which ones I got. Once the 
resin is mixed up, it is time to brush it onto all of the candy, once again making sure to coat every single square inch of it. We don't want anything uncovered because otherwise that's how the moisture is going to get in. The top, the sides, and the bottom all need to be covered. And if you guys recognize the mat that I am putting them on, you are correct! This is my old standby silicon baking sheet, which every single time I make a video, I say I need to replace this because it is five years old at this point and it is looking very beat up. The reason I'm using this is actually the same reason I like to use it as my base for when I'm working with really sticky thermoplastics like Thibra. Plastic, and resin is a plastic, does not stick to silicon. And so when you're done with it and all of the resin splatters have dried, you can just peel them right off and you'll be all set to go again. So I left these alone overnight and then the next day I had these amazing candies that were now fully coated and sealed in resin. Any excess little dribbles can be snipped off with scissors. I actually had a lot of these because the XTC 3D is a lot more runny than my other type of resin, but they're really easy to get rid of. Just these little kind of garbage scissors did the job just fine. And then once finished, it was time to actually glue it onto my shoe. I had originally wanted to use E6000 for this, but we just moved and I don't know where anything is. And so I was like, okay, fine. I will just use hot glue for now and redo it later. But like, I'm very surprised at how well the hot glue worked. I normally don't think of hot glue as good for gluing plastic things to other plastic, but there just must be something about this that worked really well because there were cases where I wanted to move something that I'd stuck on here and it didn't want to come off. So you know what? Good enough for me. I'm gonna leave it alone. One final thing you can do once all your candy is glued down is give it one more resin coat. For this, definitely pick a resin that's less runny. Maybe let it set up just a tiny bit so that it's a little bit thicker when you go to apply it. A second coat will give you even more protection and even more strength. It'll also help everything stick together so you're less likely to have one or two little bits pop off if they're all glued together. I did really thoroughly coat my bubblegum crown afterwards and I'm very glad I did. I think it's really secure. It feels like one solid mass of candy rather than a lot of individual pieces that might pop off if I'm kind of not too careful with it. And that is how I made my princess bubblegum shoes. I'm really happy with these. I think they look fantastic and they will match a lot better than my giant platform sneaker heels that I wear with everything. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, let me know down in the comments below. And if you end up making your own candy themed cosplay outfits, definitely let me know and send me the picture because I would love to repost it. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you again next time.